Here is a very interesting question which has combination of two topics. One is double linear inequality and the other one is absolute function. So it is, I have given the heading as write double linear inequality as absolute function. So the question is, solve the linear double inequality and write the solution as an absolute function. The question says minus 27 is less than 2x plus 3 is less than 25. Now it becomes an interesting question because a student sh should know how to solve double inequality and should also understand what is an absolute function to really answer this question. So I've seen a trend these days in examinations and in some competitive examinations mainly that they have combined topics that makes things really difficult for students. Now here I will explain you both the things, what is a double inequality, how it should be solved and also what is absolute function and how we can write a solution in terms of absolute function. So let's first look into the double inequality. Now we have two greater than signs here, right? Or you can say less than. So let's read this like this. Minus 27 is less than 2x plus 3 which is less than 25. Now, since there are two inequality signs, we call it double inequality and this function given to us is linear, right? It could be polynomial, it could be quadratic also at times. Now, to solve this, we have to basically get rid of all the numbers from the center part and just leave x there. So we have 2x plus 3 here. So first step should be take away 3 from both the sides, right? So we get minus 3 minus 27 is less than 2x plus 3 minus 3 less than 25 minus 3. Now by doing so we get only 2x in the center part right so so we can say 2x is greater than what it is minus 30 here and on the right side we have 2x is less than 25 minus 3 which is 22 and now we can divide by 2 right so if you divide by 2, what do you get? You get minus 30 divided by 2 is less than 2x divided by 2 is less than 22 divided by 2, right? So we get x is greater than minus 15 and is less than 11. So that is our solution. So in normal cases, you are representing your solution on a number line. And let me do that also here. So we have a number line here. We say x is greater than minus 15. So we will put a hole here, not filled in, since it is not equal to, correct? So this number for us is minus 15. And then we have another hole here, not filled in, which is 11. And the solution lies in between, correct? So that is the solution, correct? So that is how we could have given the solution. But the real problem here is to write the solution as an absolute function. Now how will you write this as an absolute function? Now let's try to understand a bit about absolute function, okay? So let me just show you on the right side how to, or what an absolute function is so that we can quickly get our answer. So let's say this is, uh, I'll, I'll just draw absolute x here. So we have absolute x, absolute x returns your positive value to any x value, right? So that is the absolute function. And we can say that absolute x is equals to plus x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and is negative of x if x is less than 0, right? But it's always positive. Now the important thing here is to note that for any value of y, let's say this is y and this is x, where y is equals to absolute x, right? For any value of y, we have two values which will correspond to x, right? except for the vertex. Right? So that is kind of critical and it helps us to find the solution. Now, let me draw this number line again on the right side and then we'll solve this problem starting from the number line itself. So what we have here is, is a solution which, which we are looking for is kind of like this, that we want the solution which is, which is some value which is in between two values and these two values for us are minus 15 and 11. Now, absolute function should be within this 
region. That means what we will do, we'll find the midpoint of these two. So if you find the midpoint, so what is the center point? So midpoint here, let us say m is equals to minus 15 plus 11 divided by 2. That returns us minus 4 divided by 2, which is minus 2, right? So we get a midpoint of minus 2 here. So that means, think like this, that this absolute function has moved two units to left. It's kind of transformed, right? So think like that. So we have an absolute function now, which is transformed two units left, right? It's kind of like this, moved to minus 2 position. So this position is minus 2 from for us. Now after getting transformed, the value should be within what range? That is what you think. Since this is a midpoint, these two distances from the center should be same, right? So what is the distance from minus 15 to minus 2? It is minus 15. So let's find that distance, right? Let's say, let's say distance d. Let me call it distance itself. So that distance will be 11 minus minus 2. That is 13, right? So that is the distance between the midpoint and the far end. And looking into this and understanding an absolute function, what we can write here as that absolute function, which is absolute x, is equals to, I shouldn't write absolute x, uh, my function absolute x is transformed two units to the left. So we are talking about this function now, the green one. So that should be absolute x plus 2, right? Absolute of x plus 2. We have moved two units to left. And that value should be within 13. Within 13 means less than 13. Do you see that? So that is what the absolute function will be, which can represent this solution, right? So our answer will be this inequality solution is equal to absolute x plus 2 is less than 13, right? That is how we can write down the solution in terms of absolute function. Now, the steps involved, let me summarize those steps for you, is when you're converting this solution of linear inequality on a number line to the absolute function, the steps involved is, number one, find midpoint. And the second step is distance from midpoint. Correct? Now, once you know the midpoint and the distance, let's say, midpoint is, is, let us say, at a point P. Let me call this P away from origin. Let's say this point is P, let's say, right? And the distance is D, right? In that case, you can write the absolute function as absolute of X minus that midpoint P, which is less than distance D, right? So if you follow this strategy, you can write down your answer. This is for less than, correct? If it is going away, then it should be greater than that point. So that is the only difference, right? If the holes are filled in, for example, then be less than equal to, correct? So these are different ways you can look into. And I hope I've tried to explain you in different ways. How do we write this as an absolute function? I hope that's very clear to you now. So, and it helps you. Thank you and all the best.